friend. So we have a couple people on. So I'm Sharon. This is Rick. I'm and, Chris. And we want to introduce Chris. So Chris, well, we met Chris in Florida in March when we were at the Keys. Um. I think you came walking by with your towel, getting ready to go to the pool. And I was out there, actually, I think on my laptop, yeah. probably editing YouTube videos. And you had talked to us about the camper. And then you said you had had one. So um, then we went down, I don't know if it was the same day, but we showed you ours. And then we went back the next day and, and did a tour of yours. And um, Chris is actually in his camper right now. So As I told you in the, in the first video, this was purchased by a guy who went to an auction in um, uh, Michigan. What, Michigan, yeah. And he purchased it. I don't know how much he paid for it, but he certainly didn't pay as much as I did for it. Um, it had been used by the Fish and Wildlife people. Oh. It was a state trailer. The AC unit was leaking. Uh, and it was leaking through every – I mean – God knows what happened. I mean, it must have been leaking for 14, 15 years. It's a 2000 and 2004 uh, coach built, and it's a beautiful trailer. It's solid aluminum from the wheels on up, you know, rims, frame, everything. And it's, you know, it's ladder, it's a ladder construction. It really is, and I, you guys understand it, and more and more people understand it, is buyer beware when you're buying a used trailer of any kind. Yes. I got in this assuming because it, it was beautiful. I mean, it had, you know, it was a $44,000 trailer when it was new. I saw the bill of sale and they wow. built four of these, you know, for their research trailers. And my intention was to, to do a very basic build out as you've seen. And I'll, I'll give a quick show around, around the trailer in a minute. But as you, as you seen where the bed was, that was my intention. There was already cabinets there and, you know, everything it was fabulous with a pass through the whole nine yards, I ended up having to rip absolutely everything out. Plus the fact that the trailer weighed well into the 7,000 pound range, which, wow. so when, when you're looking at that, you know, roughly, a, you know, an eight or 900 pound bloody ton weight on it, even with the dual with dualies. So no, I ended up no. having to gut the entire trailer. And as I pulled the cabinets out, I realized that the, 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 the all the walls, the interior walls, because it was three quarter inch ply, they'd all rotted on the inside. So there was three quarter inch ply, and then there was uh, Luan plywood. It had rotted that. All the all the fiberglass was rotten in the ceiling. The ceiling had all rotted out, but it hadn't gone through and affected the 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 outside portion of the of the laminate on the on the ply. Um, so I ended up ripping absolutely everything out and ripping out over 3,000 pounds of lumber, wow. you know, um, took me. And then, you know, not expecting to do that. And look, I've done plenty of building. You know, I am no expert craftsman. You know, I, I'm a reasonable journeyman. You know, I have a small shed in the back that is my workshop. I did all of this in my driveway, um, which made it a little bit more difficult. Right, right. But, it was two months of trying to lay it out and plan it, you know, uh, probably five rolls of blue painter's tape to lay out different floor, floor schematics. I'm surprised that my wife is even still talking to me because it was months, absolutely months of like, what do you think about this? What do you, where should we put this? And to this day, she hasn't spent a night in this thing. She's retiring Wednesday. We're leaving September 14th and we're going for two and a half to three months. I've been on three trips with that. Part probably with seven thousand miles on it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, no, eight thousand, I think now, because we were up in um, uh, Mount Greylock. We did uh, um, um, Vermont. I've done, yeah, you know, Pennsylvania, Northern Jersey. Um, uh, so we, it's been fairly entertaining because I've been dragging someone else around. But we've made a lot of changes, you know. But I think that you have to be clear on what it is you're looking for and how much you're willing to spend. Because I've got. I, to be honest, I probably have fifteen thousand dollars into this trailer now. Well, you know? that's what I was going to ask you: how much you put into it, and how long did your build take you? My build is still going on, and it took it's it took me legitimately before I saw you guys, and it wasn't finished then. It was a good six months. 
you know, wow. I was working, but I was also retired and I, you know, moving into retirement and I was doing my peer to peer counseling. So I was still getting, you know, getting calls from the union. I still had to remain, you know, in the house and on the phone. I couldn't make it so obvious that I was out there working. But plus, I've got a 60 year old house that is, you know, falling apart. I had already started replacing windows and paint, you know, so life gets in the way, right? Yes. But I never expected it to be this much. And I lo- don't get me wrong, I love it. And if I could find a way to go do another one without being murdered and buried in a shallow grave in my back garden, I would. You know, so, and sorry. So no, so tell us. There may be a delay. I'm sorry. So so tell us about. You know, are you happy with it? I know you're talking about maybe another build. Um, I love it. I think it. I think it's superb. Um, I really enjoy it. Uh, I like doing the work on it. I find it incredibly comfortable. I mean, I'll give you guys. I, I don't know whether it's going to make everybody dizzy, but yeah, you know, look. Just do it slowly. Can you see the kitchen. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, I've got. I don't know how far I've got to come back for the bed, but we've got the bed. I this is the table. That. Wait, you know. where's the ocean? Where's the what? Where's the ocean? Uh, the ocean is nine miles that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, last time I looked through that window, the ocean was right there. That's it. So you know, slowly but surely, it's things like if you remember the bathroom. Um. You know, and the, and the you know the, the composting toilet and and all the other bits and pieces I've worked on. Now the shower is here. Now this is a unique little item here because I'm trying to develop something that allows us to use it also as a sink. So I've got this that's highly varnished. You, so you use this as the sink. You then dump it into your shower because who wants to wash in the kitchen sink? Yeah, kitchen sink is small. It's yeah. You know, so it's a little bit different, but I think that. All of this is really, I hate to use the word organic, but it is. And I used that before and I've said before, I don't like to use it, but it is, you know, I mean, you started doing your van, I, you know, getting the van fixed up. You've got the trailer. It's something that doesn't end because you, you know, you go spend a weekend in it. I spent three days in it uh, two weeks ago and I was like, wait a minute, I need to do this. I, I, I won't drag the phone out and show you the, I had to build a bike rack on the back. You know, depending on how things go, I may show you that. Um, I built the flip-up table that we were talking about before, which was, which works quite well. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it is, and it, it you know, it's it's a nice thing to put extra stuff on. And um, she, you have your pull-out table from under the bed too, right? Yes. Yeah, that's this. And oh, that's already out. Yeah, I so, love the design. Yeah, and you know, the drawers are underneath. I don't know if you can see, and yep. the white cabinet to the left wasn't in here. That's that is two filing cabinets I bought from Habitat for Humanity mm-hmm. for four bucks a piece. Wow. And I ripped them down and um, uh, cut them cut them up and refitted them and repurposed them. And I use them as my as part of the kitchen cabinet now, the so, cabinetry. I mean, so, you know, I've, we've it, got tons of space. Yes, you do. It, uh, it's a great trailer. Now, you're leaving soon. You're going on a trip, right? Yeah, September 14th. We'll, we're going to travel i guess i don't know 25 states wow something like that yeah we're, we're doing ohio first and then from ohio to indiana indiana to chicago then up to the badlands for a day or so um then over to seattle uh then to oregon from oregon we can't remember exactly how it's going to lay out but we need to be in la for october 3rd for a friend's son's wedding and we're going to stop there but we're going to be in durango colorado for a bit then we're going to, we were going to go to Arizona, but I think we might give Arizona a miss and spend an extra couple of days on the land that I have out in Dattle, New Mexico, that I've not been back to in over 25 years. And the kids won't let me sell. It's not worth much, but they won't let me sell it because they go, that's their zombie apocalypse land. <laughs> so my youngest kids are like, no, no, sorry. My daughter down in Alabama is like, look, we need somewhere to go when the zombies come out. And my son, who lives across the street, it said the same thing. Screw you. You're not selling that. That That's our 13 acres. Zombies can't get up that high. Things I would change. One is that I would have gotten a 3, 000, two to 3,000 watt inverter because it, it just makes a difference on running, running heavier equipment. 
I could have put a slightly larger fridge in if I'd wanted to, which we don't really need, but it would have been nice. Um, but with our boondocking, everything that we do, I mean, except for that light there and the one in the bathroom that I showed you, um, everything else is, is um, uh, rechargeable. So I do, they're all rechargeable LEDs. So in, in our kitchen cabinets, I don't know whether they'll come on because it may not be dark enough, but so that's a rechargeable light there. When we do the rechargeable puck lights, I don't know whether I'm showing you or not. Yes. Yeah, you know, and so you get different different bits with the kitchen lights. Oh, I've got them all charging up right now. I'm charging all my lights. But, you know, everything is rechargeable and removable because – so many people, you know, and you know, we were down, down in the Keys. How many people had to plug in? I have not had to plug in yet. Well, you know? well when we were at the Keys, where you were right on, was that the Gulf or the Ocean? That's the Gulf, right? It was on the ocean. That was the ocean. Okay. Yeah. So you had such a breeze. Did you have to use your air there at all? I didn't use my AC at all. Um, for start, it needs to be recharged and... Um, I've got to get it down there to, to get it done, and I just haven't had time. Uh, if anybody is listening or sees this, tell me how to recharge the uh, uh, the carrier RV RV fourteen year old uh, AC unit, and I'll do it myself. But so, uh, otherwise, we'll get this other guy to do it for me. We will be taping this, and this will go up on the channel, so people will see it, and hopefully, oh. someone will answer your question. Yeah, so it, uh, when, you, when you go out west, will you have air conditioner? Um, I hope so, but it doesn't matter if I don't. I mean, I've got the ceiling fan. I've run that ceiling fan full blast for 24 hours. I did it as an experiment, and I did it for 24 hours. And I, I can't see myself, so I'm not quite sure if I'm framed correctly. Okay. You're good. Um, I've got uh, a USB fan that I keep up in the corner. I have my ceiling fan. I have the the four windows, the the jealousy windows that we open up. And I've got to tell you, you put that ceiling fan on, it sucks the blankets off the bed. Really? <laughs> you know, so it's about airflow for me anyway. Um, I don't mind it being hot. Obviously, the humidity gets us, it gets you a little bit. Um, but that's the other reason that we're leaving in September. Yeah, I was going to say when you're going, it should be a, a fairly decent time for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, if we don't get too close to the forest fires in California, we should be all right. So but, you're not yeah. going to have TV or? Well, I'll tell you what we've got. If you remember, I got um, I purchased this little. Uh, hang on a second. Projector. Yeah, I've got this little projector here, this ViewSonic, which is really great. I mean, this is it. Wow. That's the whole, you know. Um, so I can project it onto the screen on my wall above that table here, above that table there. Right. And then if you can see it, it's a black bar that, that is on the top of my cabinet at the end there. That's the screen. I hang it from the end of the bed as well. The problem I'm having right now is a balance, is the um, uh, getting it to sit right so that it's not skewed. Um, it runs off um, uh, an HDMI cable, so it's really nice. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've got probably, I don't know, 35 or 40 voodoo movies that I have on my laptop. And I'm a little pathetic. I can watch things like, you know, um, Independence Day repeatedly. Okay. <laughs> um, or The Rock. Or, you know, so there's certain films that I'll go to. My wife will watch water world repeatedly you know it's, it's it's some of that and as long as we get decent wi-fi i can download other movies okay. but our intention is to read he's going to help us out probably letting us put some of that on our channel um and then he'll probably start his own channel i think um, predominantly it's going to be with you guys because somehow i feel that when i name it holy crap is that a camper and other things it'll um <laughs> thank you sharon <laughs> wait, wait. I let me hear that again. So you said you don't want to do it, or you do? I don't know what I, I, I don't know how many people are going to want to look at a channel that's that's called "Holy Crap, Is That a Camper?" and other things. Do you remember the story by behind that? Yeah. 
Yeah, so I remember good. you you had said it is so cool to have one of these type of campers because people come by all the time. We could probably make more money doing tours. And yeah. they're always like, and you said, well, you actually said the S word, which we won't say on here, but you said, holy, cr they say, holy crap, is that a camper? Can I say it? And when I was thinking of a name, I thought that would be a great name. And I'm like, I'm not going to take it. That's your name. But um, it. so have you had people coming up for tours? Yeah. You know, it's funny because we, we have a good walking neighborhood, you know, and the neighborhood we live in in Riverhead on Long Island is it, it's a really good place. Everybody has watched this build from the beginning. So, you know, my neighbors come by, people come. So where are we now? Where are you? You know, I've got my 86 year old neighbor, neighbor Janet across the street, who's been in three times to have a look at it. You know, wow. um, my nickname to a number of our neighbors is Bob Vila, which I think is really funny. Because if I'm not working on this, I'm replacing windows on the house. I just did 17 windows between my house and my son's house across the street. That, you know, and I've just had enough of that. But so I've become a little bit of a a novelty on the street. Yes. And your video did, you know, the YouTube video that you did actually traveled around quite well. Um, it has been viewed in Ireland, England, Scotland. France. Oh, that's amazing. It's a popular yeah. video. Well, yeah. look, you're a very entertaining guy. I think the English accent goes a long way. I, I'll just say. It comes and goes, though. It just depends on, like I said to you, it just depends on where my brain is. If I'm really thinking about it, if I, do, if I give a speech for argument's sake, my accent changes and becomes because I'm reading that speech or I'm thinking about that. And I, I think I mentioned it to you. My, my eldest granddaughter, um, lives with my youngest adopted son in France with the, the whole family in Normandy. And when I saw her last, which was probably three years ago, um, I said to her, Matilda, do you think in French or English? Mm -hmm. And she said, when I'm at university, I think in French. She goes, when I come back to the farm, I think in England because this is my home. And even though it's in France, she goes, this is a little bit of, of, of England here. And I asked her what she dreams. And she goes, sometimes she dreams in French or English or both, you know, but her accent changes as well. She gets to Paris and she becomes a Parisian. Wow. Yeah. And it's extraordinary. And I think that, you know, I listen, I've done, I told you, I've done a lot of jobs. And I, you know, when, when I went belly up in, in 1990 um, in North Carolina with my business, I went out and drove a tractor trailer and that was the real change with the accent because I suddenly realized I got on a CB radio and I started asking people stuff. Mm. You, you do not want to hear the language that was used and the insults that were thrown at me I can't by imagine. the other drivers. I mean, it was pretty damn funny. You know, I wasn't about to tell them where I was. I did invite someone to the side of the road though and said that I'd give them a dust up if they, uh, <laughs> they'd like to meet me. Well, there is, when I first met you, I detected a slight accent, or I thought I did, but I thought, eh, maybe it's my imagination, because the first tour we did, the guy was also from England. Well, actually, he was from, yeah, he was yeah. from England, um, or Scotland. England. England I think. He was in the British Navy, isn't there? Right? You said you have electric bikes, right? Yeah, I've got some e-bikes. I've got, I bought a bike from a company called EcoTrick. Um, EcoTrick produces a, a, one of the best, I think, um, affordable fat tire bikes. Fat tire bike is, is almost like a dirt bike. I've taken this thing. I've done two or 300 miles on it already. Um, I can get on the road. I can get 30 miles to a charge out of it, 30, 35. I bought my wife a, a bike called a Mac Wheel, M-A-C-W-H-E-E-L. Mac Wheel, they're another company. Unfortunately, look, these are all Chinese companies. I can't afford a European or American built bike because they're just far too expensive. How and much uh, are Chinese ones? Mine was the fat tire would be 1600, but they sent me the wrong bicycle. Yeah. I ordered the $900 one. They sent me the $1,600 one. I yeah. offered to send it back. And then I said, you know what? I'll pay you. And they said, no, it's our fault. Don't worry about it. Well, that's cool. Yeah. And Pat's Mac wheel. We had a couple of small issues with it. They sent, it's funny because, you know, she likes a swept back handlebar. The one we ordered was a cruiser style. Um, 
and it's a straight across like a like a mountain bike. So they knocked 260 bucks off the bike, sending yeah. us the um, and that was that was an 800 dollar bike. Um, but she'll get 40 miles on a charge on hers. Mine will max out at 28 miles an hour pedal assist. Hers will max out at 18. Wow. Um, but it's just for cruising around. You know, when we were when I went to Greylock, I think I told you guys, I went up Mount Greylock with my bike, and that's no easy climb up there. You know, it's it's nine miles of straight up um, with a couple of switchbacks. But it, it, I was really impressed with how well the bike. And so it allowed me at, at, at turning 68. I don't quite have the, the level of energy I had, you know, 10, 11 years ago. And we were running multi marathons and doing everything else. And it also allows me to cover more land. Right. It allows us to cover more space. I would recommend to anybody that can do it to get an electric bike. I never thought about using that for trails of switchbacks because I can't, I can't walk up most of those. Well, that yeah. was, pretty, was pretty smart getting a bike that goes 10 mile an hour faster than hers. If she gets too annoying, you can always just leave her in your dust. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you do, yeah, she's going to watch this yeah. and she's going to go, I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> yes. No, it's really funny because my bike, I mean, my bike will go up some pretty heavy mountain trails. Blacktop is obviously the best, but it's designed for beach riding. It's designed for, you know, heavy rocks for, for the rest of it. Um, Pat's is more a light um, trail bike. So, you know, our intention was because we've, we've got four, three days, if they don't burn down up at uh, Sequoia National Forest, at one of the KOAs up there. Well, um, I definitely want to see pictures of that because I've never been. Well, we haven't been out west at all. Um, we we, we want to go. That's one reason why Rick may be fixing up the van. But, you know, time is clipping along here. So that probably will not be till next spring if, if we do that. Right. Um, because we're, we're, this is a, pl a trip that we've been planning emotionally, mentally for, for over a decade, you mm -hmm. know. And you know what the deal is. We work our asses off every single day, you know, and it, and. If you're not at work, you're working on the house. If you're not working on the house, you're working for somebody else, you know. And so many of us have had, yeah. You know, look, I've taken a, I've taken a fifty percent pay cut, and I did not earn a lot of money. I was just, you know, I'm fortunate though that I had a decent union job, you know, as, as an IT guy for for the county, and they treated me really well, you know. So, though I was not rich doing it, it gives me enough money, just enough. To be able to get by if I work one or two days, one or two days a week during the summer, you know. But Your the, wife is retiring this week, right? She's retiring on Wednesday, yeah, and that's when we're going to take the big hit. She's going to take a, she'll take a fifty percent pay cut based on her social security because yeah. she's taking her, she's retiring at sixty five. I got to drag mine out to sixty six, right. so you know, I was able, I was able to, to get my full social security. And anybody knows it's not much, you know, and we, we still carry a huge mortgage, but I just feel like I can't, I can't not do this stuff right now. Well, you know, maybe I'm still you can be a full timer in your camper. Here's the problem. I'm going to show you with the camera. People do that. Look, hang on a sec. I'm going to take you outside for a second. That house there with the little light on and the Honda on it. That's yeah. my son's house. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so your family's all nearby. This yeah. is my house. <laughs> that's the new tribe. That's the new cap, by the way. Uh, let me see the. Let me let's see the cap. So you went all the way to York, Pennsylvania, to get that. Now, what yeah, are you? I, doing? What's that? Are you convert? Are you putting a bed in there or what? Oh, yeah, we're we're trying to work it out now. This came from M and M, Inc. Uh, used car truck. They're great guys. So, it's got tons of room. And it gives me enough space. If you remember my other cat, I mean, I can get up at a fairly decent I am haunched over. But my other cat created a real problem because you had to crawl into it, you know? Oh. You don't have to crawl into this one. I love the barn door. If they, again, if anybody has an idea on how I can change this door handle, though, because I have to work out how I'm going to be able to open. I know I can open it from the inside, but if this flops down inside, I'm locked inside. Your yeah. question was, am I keeping it or selling it? Yes, yes. I, you know, I've said this to you before. I, lo I love this camper. I mean, I really do. And 
I actually come out here and sit in here sometimes because it's so freaking cozy. I can't afford to do this again to another camper, right? To another trailer. Without selling this one. Without selling it. And that's what it comes down to. And I'm really tempted. I, I would really like to try and do a sprinter, try and do, okay. you know, one of the 170 inch, you know, long wheelbase full stand up. And Pat was pretty good when I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. She said, well, what's it going to cost? I said, well, I can, I can get the truck, you get the van for around 22, 23,000. You know, so she's like, well, we can just drive the van, right? And we get, but then I'm like, yeah, but it's another 10 grand to convert it. So you're at 20, 30, 35,000 bucks. I don't have that kind of money in savings, you know? So Chris, our, our build cost us $3,000. So, I mean, I know that you could put more. Do you have solar or anything? Yeah, I have I have 200 watts of solar, 270 amp, uh, 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 two 135 amp hour batteries, um, LiPo batteries. I've got the 1,000 um, the watt inverter. It's an all-in-one system. Because the phone failed just then, I don't want to take your run because I'd show you. But, yeah. again, Will Prowse, anybody that's, you know, got any doubts about about um, or questions about um, solar. Will Prowse on, on YouTube is just amazing and is such a great kid. He's hysterical. But yeah, this is, look, I can, this is a, this is a real COVID camper. I could live in here for the rest of my life. Well, look, your camper is beautiful. I'm sure you're not going to have a problem selling it. I just don't know how much money people are getting for the cargo campers I, when you sell them. It's funny, you know, because I'm seeing them advertised and, you know, these monkeys are out there trying to sell, you know, um, teardrop campers for 16,000, 17,000. I'm like, you're out of your mind. Well, more than that. Yeah, but it, it's just bizarre, you know. Um, so the, let the me other, ask you this, Chris. If you were to sell your camper. Right. You, what'd you say? You have 14 into it? Yeah, 14, 14, five total. So... Could you sell it for fourteen, fourteen five? No, I don't think so. I think that if I walked out of here with with nine and a half to eleven and a half, I'd be lucky. Would you be content with keeping what you have? Yes, and that's the whole thing is you know that I I hit Craigslist and everything else. I nearly I had a deal on an airstream, and mm -hmm. I was going to buy the airstream because I thought, well, fair enough, I can buy the airstream, and that's an investment, and yeah. then spend the next year or two fixing that up. But airstreams have now become just they're the playground of the rich now. I mean, they really are. They jacked up. We've got a guy in Southampton who is selling his airstream for $155,000. Yeah. Wow. The 1974. How big? 55 Gs. No, how big? Uh, I want to say it's the 20, is it the, the wilderness, is it? The so 28 foot or 29 footer? Yeah. But He's put seventy five grand into it. Well, I've, oh. I've heard there are people buying old ones, and Airstream has actually been doing the re refits on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I nearly bought a twenty. Here's here's the thing. I always used to want a huge trailer, right? I mean, you know, you go around and you see these massive fifth wheels and you know, dually rear end trucks, and you're like, yeah. And then the last three trips I've taken have convinced me that 18 foot is the most I ever want to go. Right. Oh yeah. Yep. We agree. Um, I, I mean, we have 12 and I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, I, just pulling it, the gas, um, and we're hardly in it. We only really sleep in it. So, right. you know, it, it, well, it's I, perfect for us. People are like, well, are you going to put it, are you going to put a, a, an awning on it? I said, no, I'm not going to put an awning on it. I did purchase um last night or the day before i bought two hammock chairs and a tow hitch hanger if you're familiar with so they're the hammock chairs and they hang oh, off yeah, yeah. you put it into your tow hitch on the truck and those two chairs i love that thought and i've got a canopy over them because we we go a lot we spend a lot of time at the beach yeah. so that's a really nice thing to have um i people are like well are you going to put a are you going to put a canopy on why I've got a pop, you know, I've got that instant pop up that takes 10 minutes to pop up. And it's, you know, it's got a. Can you watch our movie? <laughs> yes. Oh, I 
meant to tell you that was hysterical. I loved it. I, I made a comment on it. I'm sure I made a comment on it because I bought the easy app. It's virtually the same as yours, the fold in and the whole bit. And so Pat and I watched it and we both died. It's like, yeah, I know it's not 10 minutes. No, it, know- it wasn't as bad as I thought. No. And but- we didn't fight doing it. So it was pre- actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And I paid 110 bucks for this with the, with the bug screen and everything else. Why am I going to spend another twelve hundred dollars or whatever it is on a bloody canopy so that it can blow off the side of your trailer when you're going? That's down exactly the right. Yeah. And I can't get onto the uh, um, uh, the ferry going over to Connecticut if I want to. I barely made it on here. They caught my doorknob on my door on the pipe. I, I knew I was right, and the guy said eh, a little bit to the right, and I went. I'm like, no, this is not good. See. Or- yeah, well, because the ferries that go from Orient, you they take the trailers and you go right down the middle. And it's super tight. They can just fit a tractor trailer. Mine's eight feet wide. Mm-hmm. How big is a tractor trailer? Eight feet. Eight feet. Oh. You pull the ears in, it's eight feet. And my doorknob extends out like three inches, so I've got to change the door handle on the on the door because it's obviously a floor because it's a regular, you know, household doorknob. Right. But it's pretty funny. But, wow. you know, so I've got yellow paint all over it, and the guy's face was hysterical. I was like, yeah, I'm ripping the door handle off my – and I didn't care. I mean, you know, it happens all the time. But, you know, it's funny things that you learn. Is it's – I thought I'd done absolutely everything right leaving Mount Greylock the other week. And I was all set. Trevor was out on his dirt bike, and he's doing this dirt bike trail. And I'm like, you know, taking it nice and easy. And I'm folding everything up and I do the, you know, I do the walk around, right? And I got, I just got to go back in and make sure that the water's all secure and everything else. And so I come in, do the whole bit. I leave. I drive out. What did I forget to put away? I didn't stow my fold in step. So I consequently hit a huge boulder and bent my three, nearly $300 folding. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, Rick, what's your story? Well, we came home from our last trip to Gettysburg, and we never emptied our toilet. <laughs> so we... <laughs> well, Wait. luckily nothing happened there, but when we went back to check on it, I opened the trailer up. I never put the uh, lacking device on the microwave, and the microwave was on the floor with the glass door all broken. <laughs> You told me that. You remember, you say, "Yeah, I'm going to do this." Other than ways, the microwave's going to end up on the floor. Yep. yep. Yeah. It, so we had to get a new microwave. But we're driving home, and I'm like, "Did you empty the bucket?" Because I only use the bucket in emergency, but it does have a snap lid that snaps yeah. tight. Um, but and you, or I could just picture that spilled all over. I'm like, "Oh, thank God!" Uh, it spilled. Um, well, but you know, it's a little learning curve, right? And everybody yeah. learn. We all learn from each other, and it, you know. I've got my five gallon, you know, uh, gray water tank underneath my sink. And then I've got the 25 gallon gray water tank just for the shower underneath, you know, it's mounted underneath the trailer and a 25 gallon freshwater tank. I let the trailer sit for two and a half months. I forgot to empty the gray water tank under the sink. That is disgusting. And I didn't empty the freshwater tank, which gets just as disgusting unless you put some stuff in it right and i didn't think about it and it was steaming hot i mean it, it was just and i came into the trailer i'm like what does that smell There's and it was one way it was bad yeah you know but well, you're going to get like, a lot of practice with that out in in you know, where you're going yeah no and i'm looking forward to it I, you know it's in growing up in england and you know they class it as caravanning and you pulled caravans. I pulled a caravan with a Mini Cooper, for God's sake. Hmm. Yeah, and that was a 12-foot single-axle caravan trailer. And you were hated by everybody. Because if you were a caravaner, you were slowing everybody down on those roads. Nobody could get by you. You're blocking a single-lane road. People are cursing you up and down. The weather is never any good unless you're in Cornwall, you know, or in South Wales, maybe. But so the experience here is just so much more. It's so different, you know. I mean, my experience in caravanning was just miserable weather, you know, 
and horrible times at the seaside, and that's it. Well, you know, here it just it changes from day to day, but also it's there's definitely we talked about this. There's just such a larger community out there, especially with this. You know, I told you I met the guy in in Orient Point who had done the um, the ambulance. He paid yeah. thirty five grand for a four by four ambulance. He he barely changed anything, but we spent half an hour exchanging ideas. You know, and that's great. When you go out, are you do you ever look at anyone's? Have you seen any cargoes? Because we're not really seeing them when we go out. Not out here on the East End, um, <clears throat> East End of Long Island. Most of the people that come out here have got money. Yeah, so they have. You know, uh, I think that also our proximity to um, to Manhattan, being you know being you know seventy miles out of New York. It's tough because space is money, right? Yeah. So a lot of these people do their cargo campers out of, like me, I'm lucky. I have a half acre, you know, in an area that most people have uh, a quarter. I have a huge front yard and a driveway, you know, and a brother-in-law that though he wants to kill me because I keep blocking his access to the driveway, I've had that space, you know, with a, with a two-car garage and, and all the other stuff. So how do you build it if you're doing it on your own? Do you know what I mean? So if you live in the sticks or if you live in the country, yeah, you can do it. You're more inclined to. But yeah. if, we're, you know, so you need to be rural, I think. Um, I see more for sale than I see on the road. Um, I think this is that this trailer is definitely a five-year lifespan. Sorry? I'm sorry. Would you say it has a five-year lifespan? I think a lifespan of, you know, I, I think that eventually, you know, you know it. You get in your van. And you can drive along, and if you can crash back in there and sleep in there, it's good. But hooking up the trailer and getting things going, every camper out, every you know person that goes camping goes through the same thing. That's why I, I, I can't get it with, with someone with a, a 38-foot trailer. I, to me, it boggles my mind because that is hard work. Yeah. Like I yeah. said, we actually want to just do the van sometimes and not have to pull anything. Well, that was the reason I bought that cap. That cap. That cap is really designed so that I can put the bikes inside. My concern about the bikes is that they get nicked while we're gone, right? So it means that I can't park anywhere. Where can I park if I go into, you know, if I'm in an urban area and and I'm, you know, I'm in a, a Target or a Walmart or somewhere in a, in a car park overnight, does someone come along and nick my bikes? If they're in the back of my No, no, let me say... I think that's funny. I know what Nick means. Nick means stolen. Oh, steal. It yeah. means stolen. I was thinking, uh, it's only because I had a friend, Billy, from England, and some of the things that you said, you know, he, nicking something, I know means stealing. So you, it doesn't mean nick them, but yeah, they get stolen oh, all the time. Okay. I thought he meant like bumping them with their automobile. No, I was going to. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Pinching, stealing, swiping, nicking. You know, it's a. Uh, <laughs> so, Do you have a Lou? I, you know, it's funny because I don't. I call it if I'm going to call it anything, I'll call it a bog. A what? A bog. B O G. Never heard of it. It was a thing from the school I went to. Are you going to the bog? Uh, what? It, what do you have in the back? Well, what's in the back of a car? Where oh, you, where you open it up and put things. The boot in. and the front is the bonnet, but mm -hmm. again. You're forced to change your language because if I go into a place and I go, I'll take a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich, they go, you mean tomato? And I'm like, screw you. So <laughs> people force you to change that. People Do you get paid in pound or stone? Say again? Do you weigh yourself in pound or stone? Oh, no, in pounds. Once I got here, look, I am I am a pounds guy. Most, most of my stuff is American. You know, depending on what I say or who I'm talking to, I'm either getting petrol or I'm getting gas. You know, we, we talked about this. I put my trousers on. Um, yeah. I still call them trousers. Uh, I call it, you know, a windscreen, you know, not a windshield. Uh, you know, the, 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 yeah, there's uh, definitely some differences. Yeah, and I call a parking lot as a car park. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, car park. You know, so it's funny because – Again, depending on who I'm with, I go home and you know I, I go go to Glasgow and I stay with my sister. 
everything changes. If I get to, I told you this, you know, when my wife's been at work all day and I'll call someone at home and she'll come home. Oh, who'd you talk to today? I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, because your accent's changed. It's again, when I'm, when I'm, there's certain focuses. And, you know, I left here when I was nearly eight after my, you know, after we were orphaned, we all got, we were sent over there. And I was raised with a lot of Americans. The school yeah. I went to was a lot of Americans in it. I lived from Bentwaters Air Base was 14 miles. It was the largest nuclear air base, you know, um, in Britain at the time, full of Yanks, you know. Mm-hmm. And I told you that I'm, I've am i been this, you know, the homeless person, essentially. In England, I'm an expletive Yank. Over here, I'm a, a bloody limey, you know. Um <laughs> You tell someone you're from New York and you're down south, you might as well say you've got rabies, right? <laughs> so it's, it's you know, well, you have to tell them that when you're down. Wait, are you going south or are you going well? We'll eventually go south because remember we're going to do up and then down and then all the way through and Texas right. and you know the whole bit and then uh, Louisiana and then over to Alabama and then all the way down to the Keys. Uh, it, yeah, it just makes it hard. So um, that's one thing that we try to, you know, get uh, tours and interviews. So if you feel like you want to do that, if you're bored on your trip and want to do that, you know, feel free to do that and just send it to us. You're leaving we'll out there as well that, that find out, you know, you'll know where I am so that when you do your weekly update, even if I send you a couple of pictures of, you know, the world's largest ball of string or, you know, the largest ball of wax or whatever it is. Because that's the intention of this trip, by the way, is not to see only traditional stuff, but to try and go see non-traditional stuff. Well, you know, the Stonehenge of cars. One of the things I wanted to do with this live stream, well, of course, I wanted to introduce a builder. But you're not just any builder. We, we made a connection in the Keys. We said that. We became friends. We also want you to be a part of this channel. So I want to introduce you to our audience um, as a part of the channel. So yeah, the weekly updates would be awesome. You know, you just, yeah, send- so, yeah that would be my intention to give you, to give you at least a weekly update, maybe send you some stills. My wife is a fairly good photographer okay. um, and we'll be doing more. She's the painter and, and all the other stuff. Um, and then and you can, of course, um, yeah. And then do with it as, as you, as you see fit, as you please. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to introduce you as, you know, being part of our, our team here and that we're going to be kind of documenting some of your trip out, out west or across the country. Because it's really across the country and back, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, you know, it'll be nice as we're going to do, you know, we'll probably do. We lived in Santa Fe for four years. So we're going to stop back there. We've not been back. I haven't seen my land. Like I said, there is a trailer on my land that I bought and left there. A few friends have stayed that has been there for 26 years now, and I've not seen it. Okay. You know, what, the what fact is, that I only have to pay $350 a year in taxes and maintenance on the property is a. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, Hang on, Chris. Are you. Can you hear me? You've got him muted now. What about now? Now I can hear you. I can't hear you. Hmm. I don't know how I did that. I must have hit something. Uh, All right. So we're probably going to wrap this up anyway because it's a little after eight. So thank you so much for coming on. Okay. Um, Like I said, I don't know why we were muted right now. But all right. We're going to let you go then, Chris. All right. Take care. Good night. Can hear me. So we're going to end this uh, this live stream right now. Um, sorry about for some of the technical issues, but anyway, I wanted everyone to meet Chris because he's going to be a very big part of our channel. We're going to be documenting some of his travels out west. All right, so that was our first uh, meet the builder, and hopefully, a lot of people will see it on the replay. Chris is a very interesting guy. All right, good night, everybody. Take care.